Hi guys. So, as you know, I'm studying dentistry at the University of the West Indies in Jamaica, uh, which in the Caribbean is, is one of the leading universities, if not the leading university in the Caribbean. So, for those wanting to study abroad, for instance, if you're trying to study, um, like for me, I want to study oral and maxillofacial surgery, and I want to do a residency program abroad, there are some pros and some cons. So, for, for instance, um, in the UK, and I, I reference UK because I understand that system a little bit better. So in the UK, when you want to do oral maxillofacial surgery, if you're coming from a dental background, as I mentioned in my previous videos, you can actually go and apply to do a three-year program in dentistry. And if you're coming from a dental background, you can apply to do a three-year program in medicine. During your second degree, which is your second three years, or your three years for your dental or medical degree, depending on your background, you're actually allowed to work and study. If you're a UK citizen, you're, you, on, you get subsidies and you pay about nine. You, so your tuition for your dental degree is 9,000, call it 10,000 pounds and you get subsidies and you're allowed to work. And I'm, I'm pretty certain that there are a lot of posts available for you to work, whether it be in a medical or a dental capacity. So I am probably one of the few, the first persons here at the University of West in Jamaica to do what I'm doing. While well, those in there are a few that have done it in Trinidad, as I mentioned before as well too. So it's been very hard to, to actually work and study because there's no provision made for um, someone like me to work and study. So for instance, I try to work in the night. So I work about 7 p.m. to midnight and from midnight to 6 a.m. I tried to, to take a, a few calls. Now, being self-employed is very different from actually being in a training post. So in the UK, you actually are able to work, for instance, in a hospital setting doing locum posts. So you would work, maybe you might work for $80 an hour, $20. I don't know what the rate is. Maybe $50 to $80. That sounds reasonable. $80 a um, I think I saw that on a website. $50 to 80 pounds per hour per night. If you, if you add that up, that's pretty decent. So you might work from... So if you work four or five times per week and you work four or five hours per week per day per for five days per week you can make a decent living this is show you a transition this is show you a, a contrast so some nights i can make about uh say if i see four or five patients i can make about 100 us this is not bad but that's the thing as a self-employed person i'm paid per patient not per hour so if I'm paid per patient, that means that some nights I might not, as you can well work out, some nights I might not see patients versus a person working in a hospital setting. It's going to be busy, but you're guaranteed to get your salary every single night. Um, another thing too is tuition. So for instance, tuition in a university, one of the universities that I was looking at, um, I, I don't want to call the name, but the university that I was looking at in the UK, the tuition when I converted it was 55332 pounds for the three year that's per year for three years so call it 150,000 um, US dollars and that's just for three years and that's excluding living costs excluding the amount of money that you're going to be using to fly back and forth excluding all sorts of registration fees that you're going to have to pay because this doesn't include registration fees this is just tuition so here at the University of the West Indies I pay uh, the, the cost is actually $30,000 per year um, $90,000 um, for my three-year program, if you're coming from a five-year program, for the five-year program, it's, that'll be you know thirty thousand per five, per times five. Um, but that thirty thousand dollars comes at a cost too, because you don't actually it doesn't include your your um, your instruments. You have to buy your instruments by yourself, and uh, you pay other miscellaneous fees. So like even this year, I actually registered late for sign language, and I had to pay about forty US to register late for that course, and then there's other little bits and pieces that you have to pay. So. That's just to show you that. But the advantage of doing the 55,332 US dollars um, for the UK university is that you're already in their system. So when you come out of, of that, you, that university, you're, for one, that university I'm looking at is in the top 20 universities in the, in the world. So it's a, it's a top university. It's not the top in the UK, but it's one of the top ones. And what was interesting is that, like I said, you're in the system. While the, the route that I've chosen, when I'm finished, I have to now go and do the ORE examination or the LDS examination. The LDS examination is the license, license, 
licensed dentist dental surgery examination or something like that there which is offered by the Royal College of Surgeons in England so that examination is not cheap and both these examinations cost about five thousand um, pounds in total including the first and second part so that's the disadvantage of being of coming from this background um, the UK as I mentioned before you can work and study in the U in, in Jamaica and pretty much I'm stuck in terms of work working because the times that patients would want to come which would be in the day would be would would not be um, beneficial uh, would not be possible because I'm at school in the day so when you're working and studying in the day uh, well you're working studying in the day sorry you can't you can't work in the day so basically your patients have to come at night which limits your growth as as a self-employed businessman I'm, I'm working in primary care as I mentioned before so when you come out of your dental degree in the UK you're you can go pretty much anywhere in the UK because your degree is recognized you can go any you can go anywhere in the world because your degree is recognized um, from a University of West Indies background um, you can go certain places but you still have to take their board exams and you depending on what country you choose you'll have to go back to school for two years for instance I was looking at I was calling around today because uh, I want to do a video um, detailing how you would go about getting residency programs in like the US and Canada um, didn't get much information to be quite honest it actually didn't get anything really per se persons just identified um the universities or the, the, the residency programs that accepted foreign dental residents however they never explained how and they told me to go to the website the website has information but it doesn't tell you how do you go about getting those those um qualifications or those prerequisites for those residency programs so that's a disadvantage while you're, when you do a degree in the UK, you're already there. So you're already in their program. The only thing you would have to do now, for me, like if I did my second degree in the UK, then I would just have to um, do whatever I ha exams are required to get registered with the GMC. As I already have the MRCS, I would have just registered with the GMC while I'm there and work and study. So you see, there's... I'm in a kind of a, a hard place because trying to study... At, and work with a full-time program is not easy especially if this if it's a new you're undertaking a new endeavor but it's possible all I, I like to end my videos saying whatever is you want to do is possible so I've showed you the pros and the cons which is costs versus recognition um, versus preparation versus um, being able to move where you have, wherever you want to move um, for the, I know a lot of my, my subscribers are persons who are from like India, Pakistan um, I, I've seen one or two persons from like Nigeria so depending on, on what your background is you're probably going to be the same um, both as me in terms of trying to to transition from a third world in the inverted commas um, a third world university despite the fact that teaching is awesome at the University of West Indies and it's pretty much um, up to scratch we have some of the world recon recognized um, teachers uh, some of the uni some of our teachers went to Howard Harvard you name it they've been there some of our teachers have actually been to universities in the in the UK so um, we're taught by we're first world taught lecturers so just putting that out there but the fact is it's the university that's in a third world considered a th third world country so hope this helps um, I'm gonna try to keep calling some of the the, the boards because I contacted the Canadian board and the American board um, of oral maxillofacial surgeons today trying to just get some information because I know there are persons that are trying to figure out you know what do I do after I get the dual degree um, I already I've already chosen my route because I've already done the MRCS and I've already spent my money in the UK so I'm gonna try to keep keep that route um, but there are persons who want to know how to get into the US and, the, and Canada I think the US might be a bit challenging and some persons might find it it's more lucrative but if money is not really your your um, motivation then, mon then that, it should never be your motivation so if money is not your motivation 
and you just want to get to the US, go ahead by all means. If you're going after money, just leave this leave this 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 um this specialty alone because we have enough um persons in the world who are going after money. Money's not is on everything. So um I'm still struggling to get the thirty thousand US for tuition because like I said, my patient loan has been very low, but I'm not giving up. So keep keep posting.